so my topic uh, or presentation today will be mostly about the uh, use case of uh, point cloud processing using AI. But before we go into the use case themselves, we just go for some uh, baseline terminology so uh, we are all on the same page. So uh, what even is AI? I think that uh, this year everybody heard the term AI all over the place from chat GPT to other language models. But in the fact, artificial intelligence is just a field that deals with development of intelligent systems. How we go about it, there are different ways. But uh, most uh, used uh, technology is machine learning. Uh, and that means that uh, we need quite massive annotated uh, data sets to train our algorithms to, to get to the end results. Uh, again, in the machine learning, there is, again, a variety of different uh, tools or algorithms. And most state of the art these days are based on the neural networks with multiple layers. Uh, so uh, we actually have deep neural networks and deep learning. So most of the use cases that we will be looking at today have been done using uh, deep neural networks and uh, deep learning. Usual, uh, usually the processing uh, goes like that. So first we get uh, data acquisition, then the pre-processing, georeferencing, and matching is done in the softwares from usually sensor manufacturers. Here, one thing to note is that uh, if we have uh, matching of data that isn't done properly, so that two flight strips aren't uh, tightly uh, matched together, those can also reflect in uh, classification and other derivative products. So it's really key point here that uh, we have to generate as good uh, uh, pre-processed uh, data. Another thing to consider here also is that depending on the sensor manufacturer and the quality of the uh, point cloud, how much uh, scattering or noise is in the point cloud, it also influences uh, the quality of the end results. So after we get the raw data, then we do the classification, where we basically segment every individual point into the corresponding uh, categories. We have a variety of pre-trained models that were trained on vast amounts of data from different sensor manufacturers, uh, from different geographical regions, from Europe, North America, South America, Africa, also Asia. And in that way, we can create general uh, AI that is applicable for most data sets, uh, sensors, and in different uh, geographies. So for some use cases, this is already the end of delivery. Uh, but a lot of times, we want to basically extract some additional insight out of the data. So therefore, we do some sort of vectorization, for example, to detect single trees, uh, to calculate uh, how much uh, area is covered by a tree canopy, or to do railway uh, inspection or inventory generation. So last thing before we uh, jump into the use cases would be quality matrices. So it is really important to consider what quality matrix uh, should we use uh, for our use cases. So we can use from accuracy, A1 scores, intersection over unions. And it's really critical that before we are going into the projects, we determine what is the most suitable matrix and what is also the threshold we want to achieve. So for some use cases, uh, the speed of processing or delivery is more important than absolute accuracy. So it really depends on the use case. So we have to think about this uh, beforehand. Also, one thing to note is that everybody would like to have 100% accuracy in the classification. But to be frank, 100% is practically inachievable, or for human annotators, or for machine learning uh, systems. Or if it is, it's prohibitively expensive to really check each individual point to have the correct, uh, correct uh, annotation. So let's take a look at a few uh, use case example, s examples. So one of the most common ones that we also do uh, mostly is just uh, large area uh, LiDAR mapping uh, projects. Here, usually, we are processing nationwide or region-wide uh, projects for topographic uh, mapping. Uh, one uh, 
key thing here to remember is that with use of uh, AI, we can basically process large projects quickly. And also, uh, with use of uh, AI and machine learning, we can scale our processing significantly. So we can rent out tens or hundreds of GPUs to do the processing as fast as possible. Another thing to consider also is that uh, in certain countries, there are restrictions about the moving data out outside the specific geographical region. So therefore, we can also uh, deploy our algorithms to the uh, country to decide uh, from which data cannot uh, live. And uh, additionally, if there are some national security uh, questions uh, about it, we, with use of AI, can uh, uh, make it happen that no human needs to see the data that isn't authorized to see uh, the data, which can also have huge implications in certain security and defense uh, applications. Uh, and in terms of categories, we classify standard categories such as ground, vegetation, buildings that are segregated uh, in rooftops, uh, roof object, walls. Then in terms of infrastructure, we also do power lines, wires, towers, separated in low and high voltage ones, and railroad infrastructure. So the second uh, uh, use case uh, where the adaptability of category definition uh, comes in places, uh, for example, rock face mapping. So usually classifiers for ground classification do not classify overhangs uh, as a ground, as when we will be generating elevation models, uh, we would get some artifacts over that. But for that particular client, the request was that also overhangs were classified as ground points. So what we did with the client is that we just pick few small tiles, annotate them manually to correspond the new definition of the ground category according to the specifications of client, do a bit of retraining of our pre-trained model, and with that, uh, we got a classifier that was able to classify ground according to the specific definition of the ground uh, for that particular client. Uh, the next uh, uh, thing is uh, LOD, so level of detail two, building modeling. So as already mentioned uh, in slides beforehand, a lot of times we do not stop at point cloud classification, but want to go to vectorization or some sort of compression of the data. In this particular case, uh, we are automatically generating uh, 3D level of detail uh, two uh, building models and also exporting uh, footprints of each individual building. The same technology or algorithms, obviously trained on different uh, training data set, can be also applied to different uh, platforms, for example, mobile mapping where we can uh, automatically filter out the noise, uh, moving vehicles, stationary vehicles, pedestrians, uh, detect uh, curbs, uh, poles, uh, et cetera. And again, this is then a base for follow-up vectorization of the objects that client may be interested in. One of uh, also really uh, great use cases uh, with uh, the whole society moving more greener and greener is to use LiDAR for forest management to generate detailed uh, forest inventories uh, to uh, help forest owners or managers uh, more easily and accurately manage forests. This may be in a nationwide forest or in plantations, or even it applies to urban uh, forestry. So for example, currently, most of the cities, uh, at least in Europe, are trying to follow the green space rule, where uh, from each building one should see at least three trees. Uh, the area under canopy has to be greater than 30%, and at least 300 meters should be uh, uh, to the closest green space. So in this particular use case, we have LiDAR data of, uh, of uh, municipality, which was scanned multiple times. And we did detailed analysis uh, of each individual tree in the municipality uh, over the years. And therefore, the municipality administration can then follow closely how much uh, 
the tree canopy or tree count is shrinking or growing inside the municipality itself. Uh, similar uh, thing also applies to mining applications where we can do from volume calculation, change detection, monitoring and reporting uh, and exploration. Uh, one particular interesting use case is analysis of drill holes in uh, open uh, pits where basically the drill holes were uh, drilled and then scanned with a scanner and the uh, end client want to get a detailed analysis of each dr drill hole, what's the depth, what's the diameter, inclination, uh, azimuth and uh, other attributes. And this can be done completely automatically in streamlined processing fashion. So all of those services and use cases can be done we had three ways through our services. One is uh, with use of uh, web application. The other thing for larger projects is uh, processing as a service where we do batch processing. And the third thing is that we also offer on-premise deployments and integrations via REST APIs, uh, SDKs, or a command line interface. So lastly, uh, we'll just take a brief look at our web application. So. To done the processing via web application, uh, you basically define the processing flow. All AI capabilities uh, are defined as uh, processing nodes. Also, additional analysis uh, tools can be connected. And in that way, when you press run, we can um, process entire data sets. And also, if this is happening on our web app, we are scaling up the infrastructure behind the scene for you so the processing can be done uh, as fast as possible. Uh, another thing uh, we also offer via web app is to uh, offer retraining of the, of the models so you can create your own annotations via web app, run the retraining algorithms and generate new AI uh, that is customized for you. And uh, last functionality that I want to highlight is uh, our uh, quality control and quality assurance collaboration tools through which you can uh, annotate uh, point clouds easily through the web app, share nodes between team members, uh, and also assign tasks to each individual uh, annotator working on the data set, and also monitor the progress uh, of it. So to conclude uh, my presentation, um, the key advantages of using uh, AI and machine learning uh, systems are that they can do fast processing that is scalable. Uh, we can offer seamless integration uh, to your uh, workflows or information systems. It handles data in safe uh, fashion. Uh, we also have unparalleled category diversity, number of categories. Those categories also can have dynamic category definitions. And last, uh, we also, with use of AI, can get always consistent results. So if you have large manual annotation team, then each annotator would do annotation slightly differently. But with use of single algorithm to do the, all the processing, the definition of everything is the same. Uh, so with that, I would like to conclude. If you want to try it out, you can go to our web page and try for free running the processing. And if you have uh, more questions, uh, you can visit us at boot in hall uh, 27, uh, boot number 60. So uh, thank you.